All right. Great. Well, I'm going to get started then. Well, hey there, folks. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Ian Ballou. Uh, I'm a developer at Red Hat, um, but I mostly work on the up the uh, community project called Catella. Um, I'm going to dive in a bit just about what Catello is. But before I start, just wanted to say thanks for having me here. It's always great to hang out with the Pulp crew. So let us let us begin. Um, my talk here will mostly be about how Catello integrates with Pulp's container registry and how we let users manage container content and shuttle it off to their hosts. OK, so first up, let me just talk about what we have going on in the stack. So Catello is a plugin to a project called Foreman. And what Foreman does by itself is it does, I guess you could boil it down to three things. It does provisioning, configuration, management, and also monitoring for your hosts. And so if you are someone who needs to manage many I'll say computing machines, whether they be VMs or if they're physical hosts or whatever, you can use Foreman. It's a single interface that you can log into, and you can manage all of these machines. You can install operating systems on them. Um, you can use things like Ansible or Puppet to make sure they're in the actual configuration that you want. And then you can keep track of them. Uh, you can keep track of how they're doing, monitor their health, et cetera. So where I come in, I work more on the side of Catello. And Catello integrates with a couple of other projects, the one notable here being Pulp, and then another one called Cantlepin, which lets us do uh, subscription management. In case you are a Red Hat customer, and I'll just say here, um, Catello and Foreman together, if you're more on the uh, Red Hat side makes Red Hat Satellite, um, and Candlepin is used for managing your subscriptions. So what I work on, Catello, and I work closely with the Pulp team because I work more on kind of the, the content side of things, so to speak. And what Catello brings into Foreman is content management. So with all the, the three things that I said before, Catello now lets you synchronize repositories um, using Pulp as the back end. And you can snapshot this content. You can bring it through different life cycles. So if you need your machines to follow kind of a like a development, a testing, and a production life cycle, you can use Catello to do that. And we also make sure that your machines are patched. So I'm going to be talking about our container registry system that we have. Catello lets you manage a whole bunch of content types. We don't use all of the content types in Pulp, but I think you could say we use the majority of them. Um, this is a lovely old diagram. Some of you might have seen like 10 years ago. I keep using it, because why not? Um, and the reason I mentioned this is uh, Foreman and Catello has kind of a distributed architecture. We use these things called smart proxies if you need to operate on a wider scale. And not only can you consume content, including containers, from your Foreman server, you can also con consume them from these remote entities that we call smart proxies. I won't be going too, too much into it, but just know that everything I talk about here today uh, kind of pertains to both the main Foreman, and if you're uh, somewhat familiar with Foreman, it also pertains to smart proxies. Okie dokie. So I sort of talked about this, but in a nutshell, what Catello gives you is subscription management, batch management, and then also lifecycle management for your machine's content. OK, so I think that's enough about Catello. Um, let's jump into how we integrate with containers. And so I'm focusing more today on the container registry system. Just know that using containers in Catello means you'll kind of just like you work with Pulp, you'll point to specific repositories, you'll sync that content down, and then you'll copy it around to do whatever you want with it to kind of manage it for your, manage it for your systems, and then you'll publish it um, for consumption via a registry. 
But our registry, registry system is not as straightforward as just saying, oh, we just use the pulp core registry. It's a bit more complex than that. So before you hit the pulp core registry, if you're using, say, Podman, uh, you have to go through our Catello registry proxy first. And that is because, um, I think partially for historical reasons, uh, we handle authentication and we also kind of manage how the data gets presented from the registry. So what are some of the things that the Catello registry handles versus the Pulp one? Um, so Catello is in charge of the token authentication. We actually turn that off completely in Pulp because we have our own token system that we use the Foreman. Um, in fact, you can log in using personal tokens to Foreman. We just have to massage them a little bit to get them to work with the uh, container specification, uh, which I believe is OAuth 2. Um, things like the catalog and the search functionality, Catello also handles that itself. Because when you sync a repository in Catello, we don't just say, hey, pulp, sync this, and we'll defer to you and the, your APIs. We actually index the information into our database, so we keep track of all the content units. So that way, we're not reaching out to the pulp API all the time when people have to do complex searches to figure out what kind of information uh, is in your Foreman and Catello uh, ecosystem. So really, we leave pulp um, to doing doing the, the content distribution side of things when it comes to the, uh, the registry. When it comes time to do a Podman poll, say, we defer that to pulp. And in the future, which I'll talk about for a push, it's going to look just the same. So let me just talk a little bit about how we do kind of our, I guess you call the networking setup. Um, so we use an Apache web server to uh, host out the uh, registry. And so I have a lovely paste here from our Apache configuration. One thing that's just interesting is that the uh, pulp core registry v2 endpoint clashes with our smart proxies v2 endpoint. So we have to do a nice little redirect um, to make that actually work. And I, I didn't just showing this here. We redirect it to a, a pulp core registry v2 endpoint. So if you're ever trying to debug a Catello um, pulp core registry, just know that you're not going to find it at simply the v2 endpoint. You'll have to look at pulp core registry. And the same can be said on the smart proxies, like I mentioned before. And that's more or less it. It's not super complex, but there is this nice little caveat that we have in our setup. So yeah, let's just go over a little example interaction for what it might look like. And I'll just explain along the way what happens. So when you actually run a Podman login, let's say, against our Foreman, and when I say Foreman, you can replace it with Catello in your head. It's just too tiring to say Foreman and Catello. Um, what will happen is the whole authentication dance will happen. And then eventually, it'll say, OK, it's time to get a token from Foreman. And what we're going to do is we're not even going to talk to Pulp, because Foreman is what handles the token authentication. <clears throat> we're going to check that your user exists in the Foreman database. And once we make sure that you're all permitted, you not only do you have to exist, you also have to have access to the repositories. And we keep track of all of that. We have, uh, Foreman has a whole user permission system. And assuming you do have access, a token will get generated and returned to Podman. And we actually recently made a change here. <clears throat> you can see the different fields that I've color coded. We have a token that we send along. I think that's technically not OAuth 2 spec, but it is accepted in the container world. Um, we have the expires in field. We have the issued at field. We also have an expires at field which is actually not to the container spec at all, which we caught recently. Um, so we, we made that true to the spec so that if you integrate with this system, you don't have to worry about doing weird hacks to work around what we have. So let's say you need to do a search now. You're trying to figure out what kind of containers you have. You run a search uh, via Podman. You do the nice authentication token dance. 
And then you'll eventually hit the V2 catalog endpoint. And again, this, like I mentioned before, won't go to pulp. We'll actually look in our own system. We'll do our own queries to figure out what repositories you have access to based on your user. Um, because we just, we also have a switch saying some repositories must require authentication, and some are completely open. You don't need authentication at all. So we handle that ourselves. And then we'll return some kind of body like that to Podman, showing the repositories that you can uh, pull from. And then if you're actually pulling this content, this is when we actually redirect to pulp, of course. So just there's some things I'm missing here. But as an example, when you hit this manifest latest endpoint, um, if you're searching, uh, like, like in this case, I didn't include a tag, so it's trying to find the latest by default. Um, we're going to send that directly back to pulp. We'll do uh, a registry redirect. And then whatever pulp comes back with, we'll just send it right back to the user. So our proxy appears to be transparent in that case. And then the same thing goes for the manifests and the blobs. And with that, it's like you're downloading it right from pulp. OK, so now enough with the current situation. What do we have in the future? So the biggest thing that we have in the future that we're going to be implementing is container push. Currently, um, if you want to push content up, you have to bundle it all together. And then you are able to actually upload it via either the Foreman API or our uh, CLI that's called Hammer. And you'll be uploading a tar file. And then you can also use our CLI to tag things. But it's not very convenient. And it's also not very well documented. Um, it's kind of a secret thing, to be honest. And some people don't even think it exists. Um, so what we're going to be doing is implementing container push. So you can just podman push your content up, and everything will be lovely. And I'm going to chat, talk a bit about this now. So. What are the steps in Catello? I'm just going to dive right into this. So our current design, and we've had an RFC out for this, um, a user will podman push against the same registry endpoint that they do anything else with in Catello. We're going to do the same thing we always do. We're going to handle authentication and any redirects that are needed for actually physically pushing content to pull. So when we do this, uh, I guess, uh, this is more your guys' territory, but Pulp will create a push, a special push repository. And when that happens, um, Catello is going to copy the contents from that push repository over to an, an ordinary Pulp repository so we can use it like normal. Um, and when that happens, there are a couple other very Catello specific steps that we have to do. So, this repository will be created, or it'll be reused once we push it into pulp. Um, but Catello has a concept called products. Um, a product, really all it is, is just a bucket for repositories. So you could have something like, I don't know, like a CentOS 8 product. And you could have all the, all the repositories that you need for like CentOS 8. Um, same thing goes for containers, or Python, or whatever content type you want to use. So what we're going to do is we'll create a product if necessary. And I'll show a bit more about that. We'll also create the repository if necessary. And when I say a repository, um, Catello has its own repositories. And they get synced up to pulp repositories uh, in our database. Um, so what you see in the UI in Catello, that could be a new repository if we need to create one, if you're pushing um, container repository with the same name, then you don't need to make a new one. And then after that, uh, Catello will tell Pulp how to distribute the contents. Um, we have kind of as part of this, Catello lets you do a special thing where you can have a special container registry naming scheme. And we'll make sure that that applies. So if you have some fancy way of calling your containers, that will still happen. Um, and we'll make sure they get distributed at this correct endpoint. Um, and then the last step here, eight, which is the most important thing, is that these new these container repositories you can use in Catello like any other. So that means you're able to push your content 
into Catello using Podman push. And then you can create a content view, which is what we call a snapshot. And then you can move it along that life cycle, like I mentioned before. You can do all sorts of things. Um, and this is the very basic workflow that we have decided. So let's dive in a little bit more. Um, just a couple of extra notes here. So when I mentioned that the product will be created potentially, um, what we've decided is, is that we will use the container naming to kind of show if a product is in there. And what I mean is that if you look at a container name, uh, there's like that name spacing that's between the slashes. I think I might have a uh, copy and paste of this later. But if we detect that you've entered a product in there, which I think will be probably the second entry in the container name, it'll be something like organization, then product, and then your uh, container repo name, then we'll go from there if that exists or not to create a product. Um, if there's no name, then we'll make a product for you that will kind of be your push product. Um, all right, so kind of like that with products, we'll also determine if repository need to be reused or not. And that will more come from the pulp side, because if you push to the same container repository and pulp, uh, a new repository won't be created as far as I understand. Uh, a new version will be created. So we'll just see if uh, a new uh, repository was created there. Um, and we'll also know that this is the case because of the name. Um, it's nice having this proxy we have in the middle because we can also take data and do make decisions based on it before we send info off to pull. Um, so smart proxies uh, will not have push support, at least to begin with, because with how smart proxies work in their remote nature, um, we can just mirror the content using normal synchronization. Um, this isn't fully hashed out yet. Maybe we will do push support in the end. It's just a different code base. Uh, but what we could do is we could auto sync after someone pushes container uh, container repository to the main Catello. So our uh, bases are pretty well covered. Um, so the current status that we have here, uh, we have an upstream RFC out. I have a link here. And yeah, I'll add these slides to the, uh, the HackMD after. So you can take a look and make any comments if you wish. Um, we have a very basic proof of concept. Really, it's just me making our registry accept the push request and then sending that off to pulp. Um, and then we also have essentially all the designs needed to start implementation. And so our ideal plan for anyone who follows the Catello timelines is I really hope we can get this developed for Catello 4.12. Um, Catello 4.11 is currently wrapping up development. Um, and if it doesn't make 4.12 for some reason, or if development takes longer than usual, I'm really going to work hard to make sure that it gets into Catello 4.13. Because we have all these designs out. We really need to get this thing implemented. And we know that our community wants it. And that is the presentation. I would be happy to take any questions. Ina. Hey, and thank you for this deep dive. Um, I have a question. You mentioned that during the container push operation, you plan to create a copy of the repo from container push to a normal one. Mm -hmm. And I guess you plan to do the diff on every push operation, right? If there will be another push to the same repo, you're going to copy over the content all the time. Yeah, so we would need to check the difference, of course, to copy the content over. And um, it was my understanding that the, the container push repositories aren't really made to be used for like redistributing, right? Um, you like you can push into it, but you cannot mirror into it. OK, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you that, actually, just to make sure our designs are, are straight. But yeah, so we're going to have to check the content um, after we do the push. Um, 
and that those sort of implementation details are the ones that we're going to have to dig into more when we're uh, well building it. Okay, um, I don't I don't want to create any spoilers, but uh, a little bit later on might make you a bit more happy because in the future we might merge those two types into one, so the things might get easier. Oh boy, that would be if that happens. That would be great. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to hear more about that in the future. Thanks. I was about to ask exactly that. We, we keep discussing this for, I believe, two years now. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember when we first started implementation of this, I think having the push repositories was what made the designs kind of go back and forth. And I think we figured we finally figured out what we're supposed to do. Uh, but if that changes, our lives will be even easier. I think Jared's right. next. Uh, Ian, I was wondering if you're planning to do something similar with some of our other content types, like um, Ansible and Python, that also have CLI tools to upload to a repository. We haven't had any plans as of yet to do that. Um, but yeah, if the community wants it, or actually if you guys think it would be great for us to implement it, we definitely could. Because we already have a sort of registry scheme. We could generalize it if we had to potentially. Um, I think it's a I think it's a great thing that we could talk about later. And I think Brian's next. Um, great presentation. Thanks. Do you have any feeling on the Foreman Catal community if there's an interest in image building occurring on the server side. Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. Um, I haven't heard any requests for that, but it could be a case of they never imagined it would be possible. So I would be happy to you know, try to gauge interest, because um, I think that would be very cool. I didn't even know that was you know, on the plate. <laughs> Thanks. Um, also, uh, can you talk a little bit about how you engage with your community in terms of like assessing their interests? Um... Oh, yeah, that's great. I, um, I could probably give a whole presentation on that itself. But we do all sorts of things. Um, one thing we make sure that we do is whenever we design a feature, we put out an upstream RFC as early as possible to try to see if they want any new features. Um, we do put out community polls from time to time. But honestly, our community uh, is nice enough that we just have to throw a question up on um, our community website, uh, community.theforma.org. And people will typically respond and give us thoughts and feedback. Um, but I suppose we used to do conferences more often. I think we're that's also an amazing way to for us to interact with our community. We've had a lot of ideas come from those, of course. But I think mostly our community website. Um, similar to you guys, right? Because you also use um, Discourse, right? We do. Yeah, yeah. Similar idea then. Thanks. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, then I believe I am now throwing it over to Grant. Thank you, sir. You can stop recording. Yes, I will stop. Thank you all very much.